Welcome back to Boring Build Friday. Today we have a new build. It's a 2013 Buick Enclave all-wheel drive. Um, this one does have a clear title. It is a salvage vehicle. Um, so I guess the experts are wrong and not every car that's totaled gets a salvage title. Um, I don't know how many times I'm going to have to prove them wrong, but I guess we'll find out. So we got hit by another car in the quarter here. Uh, we're going to need a quarter, some inner structure, um, the rear subframes on these are made out of GM's favorite Playdonium, so it's going to need a rear subframe and some suspension. We do have some buckles in the quarter here and here. If we pull it just right, hopefully those will pop out of there. If not, we'll have a little body work to do. Uh, that's from when the body came over a little bit. So when we pull it back, we'll see. Rear bumper I think is in the car. Somebody's been here before. It's always like an Easter egg hunt trying to find what parts they put back in and what they didn't. Uh, so hopefully there's everything we need. Uh, I don't think we have tail lights. We'll find out. Maybe they're in there somewhere. But let's get it to the shop and get it off the trailer. We don't even have to put any suspension on it because we're not going to tear anything up that isn't already torn up. So this one was dead at the auction, like every auction car, but not totally dead. I got a couple clicks, but not enough to start it. It was a short ride home from Detroit, the Motor City. We did charge it up and see if it starts. that time. Only has 81,936 miles, so it's pretty low miles. And I'm not a big fan of these cars, but people do like them, so they sell quick. Who am I to tell people what to like? So I'll fix it. Hopefully, it'll be gone soon, and I can move on to the next one. Let's get it in the shop and figure out what we have and what we don't. Start tearing it apart. So first we're going to back it in on the lift, slowly. We're going to put it up on the lift so we can take some parts off to make straightening the quarter and repairing the quarter a little bit easier. Get some stuff out of our way. So one of those things is the exhaust. And because this is a Michigan car, we're going to have to use the fire wrench. I took one look at the nuts on there and said, that ain't coming off. So we'll heat them up, they'll come right off. This is just a pretty much typical job for Illinois. The rust-free cars that we work on are just huge bonuses for me. Yes, experts, I know a power heat induction tool is available for those of us that are afraid of fire or recovering pyromaniacs. So instead of telling me about it in the comments, why don't you head on over to my Amazon store and pick one up for somebody that doesn't already have one. You know, Christmas is right around the corner. So we got one off, we'll heat up the other one. You can try taking them off without heat, but spend the extra couple minutes to heat them up and save them, it's worth it. Because once you break them, it takes a while to replace the studs or drill them out, put a nut and bolt in, whatever method you choose to repair. So now it's unbolted, we'll push it off its little rubber baby buggy bumpers. 
they really wanted to make sure this exhaust wasn't going anywhere. They have two on each muffler and one in the front. So we got one last one. Slide that off of there. And we'll go set the exhaust out of the way. Our little hot rod is ready to go pick up the kids from soccer practice. It would have been really hard to work around that muffler on the left side. So now that it's out of the way, it gives me a little more room to work. And it would have been very hard to take that exhaust off when it was up on the frame rack. So, a little planning saved me some time. And we don't have a whole lot of ground clearance on this thing, so having that exhaust out of the way will help us get over the rack. Now it's time for our Easter egg hunt. Let's see what we got and what we didn't. Here's we have a rear bumper. And while the cover is no good, a lot of the little parts on it are, and they can really add up. Got some parking sensors, some blind spot monitors, a wiring harness, some chrome trim. So it's good that they included that. Pull out some of our trim panels. Somebody's already had all this apart. They were just sitting in there. That's the storage compartment that goes in the floor behind the third row and its cover. The trim panel. And now we can pick up all of our screws. I did make a video, apparently they didn't watch it, about what to do with your fasteners. I mean, plastic baggies are not my favorite, but it's better than just throwing a handful of them into the car, which is the method they went with. So I'm going to find the bolts for a while. So, found a bunch of them. One bolt the rear seats. Let's see if we can find some more under there. And we did. The third row of seats on these are pretty easy. They're just the two bolts in the back. And then they have hooks in the front that slide into some little bars that are welded to the floor. They're not super heavy. And they kind of fold up flat, so they're easy to store and handle. Pull out our insulation for the back. That insulation was the kind that likes to catch fire, so we wanted as far away from what we're welding as possible. And we'll pull our jack out of here. We can unbolt our seatbelt. And we'll pull our floor mat out. And start with our seat puzzle. Little plastic covers. There's four of them on each seat. And there's eight of them. They're all different. So I try to keep each side together. Because if you throw them all in a big pile, you spend an hour trying to figure out where they all go. We got the back set of bolts. Fold our seat back. We'll slide it back, we'll take our front covers off, then we get to our front bolts. The little cover my hand was on, that's where the battery is on these things. Nice and convenient. And I'll pull our cover off of our driver's side. And we'll get to these bolts. Our impact grew up. Seems like these bolts rust a little worse underneath. Maybe because they're up on top of the gas tank, I don't know. So we need a little more power. Insert the, my Milwaukee would have done it comment here. So we'll unbolt the front. Fold it up. Take our seats out. There's some pins on them. They were kind of stuck in the floor. And 
Now these are kind of awkward. That stupid armrest likes to just fold up everywhere. And they're not exactly light. Got one side out. Decided going through the door was probably a better method, so we'll try that. Although the door opening isn't much wider than the seat, so you gotta be careful not to tear up the door panel. Now we can unbolt our seatbelt. bolt back in it so we can at least remember where one of these bolts goes. We'll unbolt the bottom of the seat belt on the passenger side and we can fold up our carpet. We don't need to take this all the way out. That foam on the bottom doesn't catch fire quite as bad as the other stuff does. So we're going to leave it in there and take our chances. Could be exciting. Now we can pop off the rod for the power lift gate. Just pull that collar back, pop it off of there. I'd have to lift up on the gate a little bit, take some tension off of it. Now we'll unplug the module for the lift gate, and we'll unbolt the whole assembly. It has some hooks that hold it into the quarter, so just lift it up, and this whole mess comes out of there. And some modules just randomly laying in there. It used to go there, until somebody hit it with a car. So now that our interior is apart, or at least most of it, We'll start getting the outside apart. Pull our wheel and tire off of here. Wheel's got a little damage on the outside and a good dent on the inside and a crack in the pile. We'll pull our wheel liner out of here. Also the screws for the wheel opening molding. Pop that out in the pile. Push pins. And the wheel liner should be ready to come out. It's a little wedged in here. In the pile. And we'll pull our little mud flap out of here. We'll start pulling the weather stripping off so we can get this rocker molding off here. Just the back piece for right now. Now we can unbolt the rocker molding in the front. And we'll start popping all of our little clips off to pull our rocker molding out. Tedious process. Better than buying a bunch of new clips. Unless the insurance company's paying for it. Then you just break them all. Since I'm paying for it, I'll take my time. Because I'm poor and can't afford plastic clips. Pop off the couple that stayed in there. And we'll pull our spare tire down. Much easier when you have an impact. I don't know if I'd want to do that on the side of the road. Pull its little cover off. And we'll pull the cable back up just so it's not dangling in the way. We'll put our spare on because I wasn't going to be able to get the wheel back on there. It had a lot of tension on it when I took the lug nuts off. We're just going to need to set it back down so the spare will work. And pull our other wheel off. They don't just fall off like those Texas cars. Pull all of our screws out of our wheel liner. Two push pins, and this wheel liner comes out. A lot easier than the other side. There's a little more room. So now that we have the driver's side molding off of here, we can see everything from the B pillar, which is right here, back. These clips go in this way. And everything here goes in this way, except for the one up on the fender. 
So if we take that one out there and everything behind the D pillar, we should be able to slide this whole molding forward and it'll pop off. It'll leave all the clips on there. We can take them off later when the molding's out of the way. Much easier. So let's try it that way. So the rest of the process starts off the same. We'll pull our wheel liner down, or just take the screws out that attach to our rocker molding anyway. Pop the clip out at the top of the fender. Then we'll pull the weather stripping out. Pop the clips off of the back molding and pull that out of there. And then unclip as many as we have to to get to the V-pillar. Then we'll use our rocker molding removal tool. Tap it forward. And it pops off of there. Now the clips are much easier to get off when there's no pesky rocker molding in the way. Just put our little clip pliers in there. Use the pick to push on each side of the clip. There's a little bit of it that sticks through even when it's engaged. That's what I'm pushing on. They're pretty easy to reuse if you have a little patience. So we can put our tire back on. We're ready to set it down on the stands so we can put our clamps on. Put a couple blocks of wood under the spare tire so it's at level. When we go to put the clamps on, the closer it is to level, the easier it is. So we'll slide the brackets on, and we'll slide the clamps on. Same thing on the other side. And there's a brace underneath. Kind of protects the gas tank from the side collision. Just has a bunch of bolts that hold it up there, so. We're just going to take that out of the way because when we raise up our lift, the bracket for the clamp is going to hit it. So we got it all clamped up. Let's give it a little quick pull. See how much we can move. We're not going to be able to pull the inner structure by pulling on the outside. It just separates everything. People ask why I don't just pull the outside out. There's the inside doesn't move with it is the best answer. So we'll pull the outside out a little bit, get it out of our way, cut it out, and then move on to the inside. And there are different methods. Some people just cut the outside out right away and go straight to the inside where the actual damage is because clearly you're going to be changing the outside anyway. I've always spent a little extra time to pull the outside first. Makes you feel like you're getting something accomplished, even if you're not. So, we bring out everyone's favorite tool, or at least mine, the pneumatic can opener. We'll open up this enclave and see what's inside. Look at that. He's got hearing protection and eye protection. No gloves today. Can't have everything, safety experts. We're just going to have to risk damaging the metal with my skin. This part's kind of fun. Just trim out as much as you can. Pile. A little spring too. So now we can unbolt the module bracket. You can do it from the other side with an inverted Torx. 
but I've chose to use regular Torx on the outside because, well, I cut a hole in it and I can. We'll pull the bracket out of the way. What's left of it anyway. We're going to need a new one. Hopefully our modules are good. We'll find out. There were no warning lights on in the car and everything I noticed was working, even the XM. So I'm hoping the modules will be all right. We'll put the cover down. And we can stick our hand in there. We can release the plastic clips that hold the wiring harness. Otherwise we'll end up breaking them off. We just pry them off of there. We'll squeeze the tabs. They're similar to the clips on the rocker. Squeeze each side. Oh look, foam. It's just the beginning. My favorite part of these. More foam. We'll pull the wiring harness through. This is the harness that goes to the taillights and the rear bumper. And we'll pull this mess of wires out of our way. The drain for the sunroof. And we'll put a little pull on what we have left of the quarter here. Adjust the tower so we can pull a little further over. And we'll give that a pull. That's enough. We're going to change it all anyway. I'll take our gas cap off, unbolt our filler neck, and pull the bezel out of there. In the pile, unbolt the clamp on the filler neck to the gas tank, and then disconnect the breather line. Unbolt the filler neck from the rail. Seemed a little rusty, so. Ran it back in, clean up the threads before running it all the way out. Sometimes that'll keep you from breaking it off. And this was one of those times. So now we can try and get our filler neck out of here. Unbolt our bumper bracket. And unbolt the other bumper bracket. In the pile. Now we'll open up more of our tin can. Open the door in case the air chisel slips. I don't want to have to fix any dents on the door. Or I don't want the bodywork gnome to have to fix any dents on the door anyway. You know I ain't doing it. Oh look, more foam. lower piece off. Open it up. Cut the back of it. We'll leave our vents in there. We'll be able to find them later in the pile. Now we can get to our inside. We'll pull our outer wheelhouse out. It'll actually start separating from the inner, but we'll see how much we can get. We might have to cut it out and pull the inner later. We'll hammer it out. It came out pretty nice. I probably could have put a little more time into it and saved it. But I bought a whole quarter. I'm going to use a whole quarter. 
and I like to replace as much of the bent structure as I can. Now we'll pull the back. And we'll dig out some more foam. As we haven't found enough already. And more foam. And more foam. So that's what happens when you pull the outside. We started to split that seam. It wasn't going to pull the inside anymore. And there's still kinks in it. So we're going to have to reevaluate our pulls. Probably going to have to cut that outer piece off to straighten the inner piece anyway. Or just cut it all off and replace it. Our shock's a little bent. Our rail is actually pushed in where the shock mount is. So we'll have to straighten that out. I'm definitely not changing that rail. It's not necessary. And if you look way back in there, you can see our twisted up subframe. We'll take a better look once we drop the subframe out. So that's it for today. We got our car off the trailer, we got the exhaust off it, pulled the rest of the interior out of it, and started some rough pulls. Next time we come back, we'll start fine tuning our pulls, measure everything out, get our quarter ready to go up there, maybe even start welding it up. But right now, I'm gonna go order some parts. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.